Mr. Eli here and today we have one more video class. Sim, o pai tá on. Vamos nessa galera e vamos começar without further ado, let's get started because today we have a lot of corrections to do from the previous activity that we got from the last one on the 16th of October. So if you guys have any questions about the content we worked last time, check it out the class of October 16th. Well, without further ado, let's check it out all the corrections we gotta do. We ended up last lesson by reading, by reading this informal letter a person has written. Katie actually has written by her future self. Yes, she uh, on her uh, 13 or 14 years old decided to write a letter to her future self. Isn't that crazy guys? Well, we read that letter, we analyzed that a little bit and basically we had to define which part of the letter is uh, uh, what each part of the letter is representing. The very first one here, marked by letter A, is the heading. And the heading places the city, the date, and the year. After, we have greetings, which uses the year adult me. The greetings are the expressions you're going to use to say hello in your letter. Try to be really polite on that. After, we have the body of the letter, which basically consists in the story or the message you want to pass. Letter D is the closing, which is an expression to finish your ideas or to close your, your, your body, like a conclusion. And letter E represents the signature. Well, guys, we already studied how to do a letter, so be very attentive because I'm going to get you guys a really interesting exercise to do today. So, let's keep on going though, correcting the exercises. So, the second exercise is here, you have to match the parts uh, of a friendly letter. So, the heading is basically your address and the date. The uh, salutation or greeting represents what you put right in front of the name of the person you are writing to. The body is based on the information you are writing in the letter and the closing is how you say goodbye before you sign your name. Here on the number three, you have to match the sentences below uh, to the part of the letter they belong to. So we have dear, New York, etc. and etc. And we have heading, greeting, body and closing. So the ones who go in the heading are New York, August 1st, 2020 and uh, 7, 15, 19, which is also a date, which means Day 15 of the month, 7th, the year 2019. I remember you guys that the month comes before the day when placing dates in English. All right? Well, guys, the greetings. So, dear, hey, and hello, my friend. I like to say hi, hello. Buddy, I was thinking of you. I hope you're well. And when are you arriving? The question. All of these are expressions that can be used in the body. And finally, to close your letter, you can use lots of love, your friend, sincerely, and best wishes. Now, guys, did you know? Did you know that receiving a letter is one of the best feelings that one can experience? Give it a try. Write to someone that you love and see the reaction that you will get. There are other forms of informal letters, such as a thank you letter, a congratulations letter, a birthday letter, an invitation letter. Uh, to your pen pals as well. So that's the reason I'm gonna ask you guys to post in the section of this video class right here an informal letter. Yeah, that's it. Write a letter to a good friend of yours who is in your class. If you don't wanna write this letter to a friend of yours, you can assign this letter to your teacher. And in this case, make sure you include the following items. All parts of a letter that you saw in vocabulary stop a personal tone of approach 
clear introduction in the first paragraph explaining why you are writing, details of the message in the body, and finally a friendly last paragraph with final remarks to the closed letter. If you don't want to write to one of your friends, you can write to me this letter. I'm going to be really, really happy to get your letter. All right, guys? And so this is going to be posted in the section Tarefa Task in the uh, down below this video right here. All right. Let's keep on going the correction here, guys. So very first one here. Um, use the expressions in the box to complete the following sentences in your full notebook. In full in your notebook. So first, we have a lot of expressions there. First one is sometimes it is very difficult to express myself. Which expression of those, which expression of those can represent that it's difficult to express myself? So we have letter A to hit the rock bottom. Letter B to have a star to put my feelings in words. Oh, we got it. That's letter C. Sometimes it's very difficult to put my feelings. In words to express myself letter C answers number one number two they are very determined they never letter J give up so we have letter C and letter J so far well, let's put here in our board one equals C oops one equals C and two equals J. Let's keep on going. And basically, number three, Marianne, she is the best in class. She's the best in her class. So, isn't it possible to say that She is a straight A student, letter I. She is a straight A student. So let's keep on going. Oh, let me just do here. One equals C, two equals J, three equals I. Okay? Number four, he used to be very successful, but then he moved to another city. His life changed. Things were not so good, and he, and he, and he, hit the rock bottom. Letter A. Look at that. So let's put here first. So four equals A. Why? Because he used to be very successful, so he's not very successful anymore. So he moved to another city and life changed. That's the reason. When you hit the rock bottom, you are not successful anymore. Number five, my grandfather always says that because we don't know what the future... For us... We should enjoy every day of our lives. The future what? The future... I think we could say the future... Have in the star for us. In my opinion, this is the best suited answer. Because when we don't know what the future has in store for us, we don't know what the future holds, what the future has to us. So that's the reason I'm going to go for number five equals B. Number six, and my grandfather gives us a good example of determination. She never Settle for less, even when things are difficult and seem impossible. She also says that we have to believe and we can do our best and never give up. So we have number six, H and J. Number six equals H and J. Number seven. Number seven, 
Paul likes to be alone. He never hangs out with friends. So seven equals D. And finally, 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 number eight, when people try to when people try to bring you down, just smile and send them lots of love. So number eight would be bring somebody down, eight equals G. Well guys, let's keep on going our correction and then the number two is saying for you guys to do a research about the generation Z, the Zoomers, and the generation Alpha, the first group of millennium children born from about 2011 until 2025. Write six sentences with what you imagine the future will be like for the teenagers from these generations. Uh, let's go. So, six phrases. Phrase number one, it, it'll be very technological. Number two, it might be very polluted. Number three, let's say they will have flying cars, cars, they will have different pets. Five, they will eat different food. And number six, Brazil will be a first world country. Let's be positive here, guys. Let's be positive here. Number four, use of oh, number three, right? Number three. So Gina is the business manager of a growing company. She is presenting her analysis for the next semester. And we're going to make predictions about the topics below and make sure we also use negative forms, right? So first one might be positive. We could say that, uh, that uh, this company's business will grow. They will hire more employees. They won't fire anybody, negative in the C. Affirmative in D, they will develop more products. Negative in E, they won't advertise on TV. Letter F, they won't lose money. And letter G, they will invest in social media. You can write the phrases in your notebook down there. Let's go to number Far and using the future tenses in our notebook, we're going to make sentences based on the scenarios and the words in the brackets. It can be interrogative, negative sentence. Example, she can't open a window, so I'm going to open for her. In this case, in letter A, I have help as my keyword, so I really don't understand this exercise. Can you help me? Please, can you help me? Você pode me ajudar? Don't worry. It can take very long time to finish it. Pode demorar. It can take very long time to finish. Let me see. My parents always encourage me saying, we know you can be a great adult if you make a difference in this world. You can be a great adult if you make a difference in the world. Letter D, if she continues ice skating so dangerously, she can break a leg. Ela pode quebrar uma perna. She can break a leg. Tim cannot meet you tomorrow. She must see the dentist. She needs to see the dentist. She has to see the dentist. We have many options there. All Food is finished. We have to go to the supermarket. Nós precisamos ir para o 
supermercado. Number five, how do you imagine yourself in the future? Write six sentences using the expressions below. Three of these sentences have to be in the negative form. Let me give you guys my opinion here. So, letter A is going to be I, I won't give up my objectives. That's A. B will be I'll hang out with my wife this weekend. Letter C, oops. Letter C, I won't bring you guys down. Letter D, I will always be a straight A student. I won't hit the rock bottom. And finally, I'll do a lot of stuff. These are my suggestions, guys. You can do actually whatever you feel like doing. You don't necessarily need to follow my suggestions. Let's go to number six in your notebook. Write a short letter to one of your friends. This is basically this exercise right here. So for the number six, you basically complete this exercise here from page 18. All right, guys, let's take a look in the final summary. Uh, so remember that the heading about address and date, the greetings are how you start your letter, the body is what is the message you want to send, the closing is the final expression, and finally you sign it, right? In this lesson we studied future tenses, will and going to, we'll use it for predictions that we think something will happen, for example, they will make a lot of money someday, or promises I won't tell anybody, or instant decisions like we are late, I'll have to go, I have to call a taxi. Going to use for predictions based on present evidence, for example, the clouds are so great it is going to rain, or decisions made after planning, tonight Karl and I are going to watch the new DiCaprio movie. All right, guys, I come back next Friday with lesson two, chapter two of unit three of your books. So don't forget to do the homework of page 18. So see you guys later. Bye-bye.